One of my favorite albums of all time came out in 1990. One of my personal favorite albums of all time. I could listen to this album today and I feel a uh, similar joy when I listened to it in 1990 because it was prophetic. Yeah. And a lot of the things that the man was talking about in this album, take a look around back in 1990, is applicable to what we see in, in our communities and in our country today. Uh, this guy is a great friend of mine and my, my, my longtime brother and partner, King Tech, uh, member uh, of the legendary Juice crew, Heather. Um, he's gone on. He, like Tech Nine, uh, people like OC, people like J. Rue, the damager, um, they found a way to uh, spread their words, spread their music, uh, spread their creativity, even outside of Brooklyn, outside of the United States. Uh, when I go overseas and we talk about different artists, pioneers, and folks that influence artists who are locally overseas, his name often comes up, which is a joy uh, for me to hear because I've always respected him as an artist, and I respect him as a person, and he's here today, the one and only Master Ace, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. Thank you, Tech. Sway, Sway, appreciate that, man. Nah, Ace, that's real, man. I appreciate it. Man, King, Shout to you and Tech, man. Well, you know, you've been, Ace helped to really help us to define what it was we were doing when we started to the Wake Up Show in 1990. Artists like you. Um, Chino used to be a- Chino fan. Excel, Large Professor, Diamond D, you know, uh, AG, you know, um, Course Nas, Course Big, before they were who they are. You guys helped us really push a narrative about hip hop music and y'all were a bridge to, you know, um, back then when it was so regionalized, yeah. we could play a, a Master Ace record and dudes in Oakland was like, yo, I rock with that. Where he from? Yeah. What part of the town he from? Yeah. Yeah. Well, why he's using that slang? We don't use that slang here, but what, what part of the town he's from? But you made universal music, so, um, and that's kind of what we wanted to do. And so I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Yes. Thank you, man. Cool G rap. Um, Buckshot, Duck Down, Attire Crew, Smith & Wesson, Torre, Royster 5-9, uh, Master Ace. Um, the list goes on and on. Uh, this guy as a curator of sound who, who came to us by way of Canada. Uh, to me, is a phenomenon in his own right. When I listened to the album they just put together, I, so many questions came to my head about the musical composition. Uh, which makes so much sense because of all the all the great music and all the great artists he's worked with uh, throughout his career, um, and he's always created his own signature sound. And it often makes me wonder what's happening, what's going on in the water up there in Canada, because they got a lot of gems <laughs> that uh, folks may not know about. But we got one with us right now that everybody know about and respect, the one and only Marco Polo. Yeah. Yes, sir. Marco up, Polo is here. Yes, Mirko Pueblo. There it is, man. <laughs> What's going on in Canada, man? They jump and push your tea out there, man. What's that about, bro? I Toronto. saw a clip of that. I mean, yeah. I, I've been living in Brooklyn for 18 years, so <laughs> I'm a little. I'm not involved. I'm you know a little the, disconnected. That? Yeah. I don't know. You're gonna have to tell me what happened. Uh, push your tea went on stage. Some people were throwing kooky beer. kids was throwing <laughs> beer at them, and some jumped on stage. You know, Toronto's getting a little wild recently but with many things, so I hope it settles down. You hope it settles down. But Toronto also, um, you guys got, it's interesting, the sound that's coming out of Canada, but was it like that when you flew over here? That's why I moved to New York. It was not like that. What was it like? Was the country, were people not accepting of this genre? Or? No, we had we had a great hip-hop scene. You remember all the guys, yeah. Socrates, Cardinal, mm -hmm. Maestro Fresh West, we mm -hmm. take it all the way back. That was like our Big Daddy Kane. So, you know, we had... Mishimi. Mishimi. We had mm -hmm. great music, but at that time, it wasn't on the level that it is now in terms of people really paying attention, like, you know, with The Weeknd and Drake. This is years before that. So I felt I had to move to New York at the time to, to make it happen. Do artists like The Weeknd or Drake or Tory Lanez do, uh, do the uh, Party Next Door, any of these guys, do they reach out to you? I spoke, I have one Drake story. I spoke to Drake before he really came into his own sound, and we used to communicate. I sent him some beats, 
people connected us, but it just didn't really happen at that time because I think what he was looking for and what I was doing at the time, I just moved to New York. You know, I'm working with, with Duck Down and Ace, and I think we were on different, you know, different waves. Mm-hmm. So, shouts to Drake, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's doing amazing, right? Um, how long you guys been working together, Ace? How did it happen? We met in uh, 04. Uh-huh. I was working on my album, A Long Hot Summer. I was in the studio um, at the studio called The Cutting Room. And um, on my way out, so skinny white kid came up to me with a CD, like, yo, I do beats. Mm-hmm. I do beats, you know, you check them out. I was like, oh, I'll check them out. Back then, it wasn't nothing to, you know, go home, pop the CD in. You know, you scan through them, see what it sound like, see what his vibe is. And most of the stuff that I was getting from dudes we just wasn't cutting it. And this guy, he had this knack for drum programming that mm-hmm. just caught my attention. And I and I hit him, I hit him, called him back. I said, yo, send me some more joints, yo. I kind of like what you... I like your ear. Send me some more joints. And he sent me more joints. The, the next batch of joints he sent me, I used one of them on my album, Long Hot Summer. And, mm-hmm. then, and on that same CD was the joint we did, Nostalgia, that people go crazy over around the world. And they still do yeah. um, um, to this day. What kind of drums, like what kind of drum machine was you working with at that time? Or were you on Fruity Loops or what were you doing? Um, absolutely not Fruity Loops. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to slide no, that in. <laughs> no, no shots to Fruity Loops, but I started on the MPC 2000 XL because I wanted to be like Large Professor and Primo and use an MPC. So I started with that, and I still use that. I, I incorporate newer things, but the home, you know, the the heart of the production is the MPC. It's the MPC. Um, Ace, um, if you wanted to, how often could you travel and tour overseas? You mean if I wasn't married? Yeah, if you weren't a, married, oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I could be over there three hundred days a year. <laughs> Ain't, Honestly, isn't that something? If if if, it, if I had that type of like freedom to do it like that, I could be over there. Yes, definitely half more than half the year. Would you get booked more over there than over here? Oh, yes, absolutely. Still do. That's just how it is. Um, mm-hmm. There's just more legitimate promoters out there that are willing to take care of you the right way. Mm-hmm. Because I could do a lot of garbage shows out here. I could be in motel sixes and. You know what I'm saying? We can't really, you know, we only got covered one room, like that kind of stuff. But I'm not, mm. I'm not putting up with that. So I only deal with promoters out here that are, that are coming correct. But overseas, everybody comes correct. They put you in four star, five star, sauna, the right situation, meals, the way it's supposed to be. And Why we- do you think that is? Like, what is the difference in the embracement of our culture overseas versus here? I just think that um, in the United States, the 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 value for artists, unfortunately, is based on radio play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think promoters yeah. look at it like, well, he ain't on the radio, so why am I spending this amount of money? Um, and, you know, maybe there's some validity to that because they think if if you're on the radio, then, th- then more people are going to come out to the shows. Right. Um, but I don't know. I have my standards. Um, I've done shows for shaky money. Because I knew that it was a would be a good look to just get in front of people, and then I, I hustle my merch heavy, so some. But I'm not going. You know, we ain't doing motel sixes. We ain't doing none of them <laughs> with a room open out to the parking lot. I'm not doing none of that stuff, mm-hmm. and that's in my rider. Like, yo, no hotel rooms that open up to the parking lot. Not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no yes. hotel rooms that open up to the parking yeah. lot. Not doing those. Because they will put you there. Yeah. Um, you, you you talked about how the mentality of promoters have become as such. If you're not on the radio, you're not worth promoting or you're not getting streams, right. um, that sort of thing. So um, some artists kind of adjust to it and try to make songs or uh, follow suit on how they could probably become hopefully more streamed or more on the radio. And then so do producers. And so let me, let me ask you this, Marco Polo, because it's, it's been a... You know, trap came in, and which isn't the hardest thing necessarily if you're a well-rounded producer to emulate. And you hear a lot of producers who emulate other producers' sounds. How have you navigated through that? It just has to happen naturally. Uh-huh. I don't hate on any genre. There's a lot of trap stuff that I dig that I think is real creative. And if one day I sit down and something like that happens, the energy's there, dope. If not, it's not getting forced. I'm not doing it because I think I need to do it. It just uh-huh. has to mm-hmm. happen. It's not, there's no overthinking involved. If I want to make some slow tempo stuff i do it you know what i'm saying but it has to happen naturally yes uh, you guys put together a great uh, fusion a story about brooklyn really uh a brooklyn story and it's not spelled the way we don't normally spell brooklyn um i know a little bit about the history the origin of that particular word but why y'all spell it b-r-e-u-k uh e-l-e-n so when we were talking about album titles we were throwing a bunch of titles out there and, and we both kind of agreed that 
Brooklyn needed to be in the title some way. That's we knew that, but when I looked at it on paper, it just looked too cliche. Mm-hmm. So I, I I googled the city that I was raised in, and I just wanted to know more about the city. And I come to find out that it got its name from a from from a city in in Holland. When when Dutch settlers left uh, Europe and came to the New World, they landed in this part and they brought this name Brooklyn, and that's how it got its name. And I thought that would be cool. Let's spell it different. It looks different. It looks cool. Marco was a little shaky on on it at first. Absolutely, he I was, was like, people aren't gonna it. know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 but now I love it. it. Well, it separates it, right? It gives yeah, it. It's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the 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 thread of the uh, storylines in the album, I think, um, is important too. And even starting with the first track, Kings, you say something um, lyrically in it. That um, uh, I want to say, DB and I, we talk, we have these conversations all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's this whole. I, I, I'm going to try to eliminate the, the, this uh, virtual gap between the older and younger generation. Right. This whole way of thinking that because you're older, you're on this team. Because you're younger, you're on that side of the Correct. field. All that shit is bogus to me. Right. And I think you said something really simple. You say we look back um, to when we were their age, and I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. paraphrasing and when parents used to say the same thing that we're saying about some of these younger kids coming up mm-hmm. when run dmc and all these guys came up yep. some of the things they were saying to us about the music and culture we're now repeating yes, yes. right yes speak on that e- you put that e- in there even down to the clothing like yeah we was wearing you know fat laces and our, our shoes untied i said like, what are you doing why are you dressing like that you know mm-hmm. we we was wearing lees and whatever and we were putting uh, uh, um, writing on our, our jackets and all that crazy stuff. Our parents didn't understand that at all. They didn't get it. They didn't understand it. They didn't like it. And they were like, "You need to listen to some real music. Listen to listen to some Earth, Wind, and Fire. Listen to some, listen to some, you know, Al Green." Um, which we, you know, that was the that was the backdrop to our childhood. Our parents playing that music, but we wanted our own thing, mm-hmm. and that's kind of still what's going on. That's what's going on now. Yeah, they want their own thing, and that's why you kind. Of- Part of the reason why you just don't diss other folks and other producers and music styles and genres and all of that, Marco Polo? What's the point of dissing anybody? It's a waste of energy. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, the yeah. whatever's happening with younger people, because I'm about to turn 40, that's for them. You know, if it doesn't speak to me, it doesn't speak to me, but I have no hate for it. Mm, you know? Love it. Damn, man, these dudes a round of applause, man. Shit. Whoa! Um... Uh, Smith and Wesson is featured on the title track, well, I called it the title track, but Brooklyn. Um, yeah. um, to the, um, and, and in that, you talk about um, the movie Crooklyn, or when mm. people start calling Brooklyn Crooklyn. Mm-hmm. You know, you give an ode to Spike Lee, too, you right. know, in that in this same song. Do you think, because I know, ironically, Pop Spike Lee did the Chirac movie. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and a lot of people in Chicago felt like, hey, man, don't, you know, we, we do say that, but, man, don't yeah. be exploiting that shit. That exactly. ain't all that's here. Right. Uh, do you think the name Crooklyn, when it was called Crooklyn, changed the perception of it, or did it hurt Brooklyn? I don't think it hurt Brooklyn um, because the movie was actually a, a really heartwarming yeah. family movie. So okay. from that standpoint, no. But there was like a lot of other, you know, term Brook Nam, uh-huh. Vietnam Brook Nam, like those kind of those kinds of names, you know, were being thrown out there. And there was a, there's a perception about Brooklyn. Let's be honest, you know what I'm saying? They say, you know, tuck your chains, be careful, you can get stuck at any turn of a corner. And yeah, that's there. But I wanted to write a record that actually spoke more about the beauty of Brooklyn and what was great about Brooklyn. And there's plenty of songs about Brooklyn that glorify guns and drugs and that lifestyle and we get it because that's part of it but Mm -hmm. why not do a record that you know lifts brooklyn up in a different way okay let's hear that record man y'all mind if i play that one oh man all right here it it is man brooklyn featuring smith and wesson master ace is here marco polo is here y'all want to talk with him 888-742-3345 i just got into my savory swift voice right here shout out to brooklyn yes Brand new, off the album, A Brooklyn Story, Master Ace and Marco Polo, A Brooklyn Story, the album is out now. Hey, when you when you look at the the, the younger artists, like the Pandas, and we had Corey Finesse here from the 90s oh, yeah. in, in Brooklyn, and, and the Casanovas, and are, are any of those um, up-and-coming artists, artists you reached out to, or that would you be willing to work with? Master Ace. Well, we got um, we got this kid Marlon Kraft on the album, who's yes. very, he's still in his 20s. I mean, yes, he's, yes, he's yes. very young. Um, I had reached out to to join her to be on the record. He the schedule didn't work out, but uh-huh. uh, 
Yo, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely those those some of those cats is on my on my radar. You yeah, know, yeah. It just got to make sense though. Like the the vibe. I'm, I'm not just putting dudes on records just because they popping or they young or they new. Yeah. It got to make sense. You got a little fame on the record too. That yo. Yeah. <laughs> we broke from the same hood, Brownsville. Never collabed. We never been on a record together ever. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it was just first little fame MOP. We from the yeah. same neighborhood, so I was just glad. I was glad that happened. You know, Marco kind of encouraged me. And in, into believing that it could it could work, because uh-huh. yeah. I I wasn't sure that it would be a good mixture. Cause yeah, MOP is a different energy than 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 me, right? Mm-hmm. But this particular record was like the perfect record for for it. And he he did his thing on it. You know, I feel like we we match each other's energy perfect on that record. Man, we got Mel Blunt on the line. He's from D.C. Mel Blunt, what up, man? What up, Mel? Mel Blunt, Mel Blunt, what up, Mel? Mel Blunt. Huh? Hey. What up, Sway? Hey, thanks for having me on. What's up, Master Ace, man? What's Big fan from the Take a Look Around. Ooh, appreciate project. you. The back was the battle in Brooklyn. I got to, yes. you know, all of that. Um, I and I just want to touch on something that you guys are talking about. Uh, we say the same thing as our parents regarding the young folks. Now, as a person that saw the, the progression from Run DMC to the Kings of our Kims to the Wu Tangs, the Dre's and the Snoops. It's not about the age. It's about the skill quality. Definitely. It was all things change, and younger generations have always come up in hip hop. That's nothing new, but there was a skill level prerequisite uh, that was that you know it was a self checking uh, genre. If so, if you didn't have a skill level, you were gonna get shut down. You were gonna get kicked out. So it's not the youth. It's the fact that there there is a movement where they made it's an art form. Hip hop is an art form. It is a culture, but. Uh, the record industry is making it to a point where any and everybody can do it. And when that happens, it loses its luster. You want to chime in on that, HB? I think it's a little bit more than that. I think to Ace's point, if our parents would say, listen to The Temptations, listen to Gladys Knight, listen to Aretha Franklin, we actually knew who they were because we grew up in the house and we listen to that music so we can make the reference as to why you hear so much production. We know, oh, that's, that's James Brown, that's this. I think what happened is that some of the um, some of them, not everybody, just had no respect for the history, didn't care. I don't know who that is. I'm only 18. I don't know who that is. I'm only this. And I think that's sort of where probably the divide started, you know, just because they didn't even care about the history. Just some of them, though, not everybody. You know, it's interesting you bring that up, Mel, because um, Master H graduated from the University of Rhode Island. Yep. And and he was just showing me this issue that the alumni put out, a fall issue of um, uh, what's going on in the University of Rhode Island, and he's on the cover of the issue, right? That's dope. Very dope. And they had no idea he went to to the school. They didn't know, right? They I mean, they got me in the in the list of graduates, but they didn't know that that same person turned into this artist, Master Ace. Legendary. I remember that was so big, you know, like for us in the in the community when we was like, damn, Master Ace got a degree in marketing. Well, what people used to say, marketing. It was marketing. Uh, marketing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like so big because <laughs> our generation just didn't graduate from college. We went like a semester or two <laughs> or a year or two, but nobody <laughs> actually finished because you made that connection with like a producer in college and then you kind of rode off into the sunset. So right. it was always kudos to you for that well it worked out to, for me that way because i didn't even step into a studio until after after i really graduated like i, I mean I, I, w- I went to a studio my junior year i was i met marley we worked on some music but marley mall right. the legendary producer right. dj but not until Juice i was crew not until i stepped out of uh graduated from college that i had that first opportunity to actually record a, a, a have a record on the radio mm-hmm if you back then put every Juice Crew MC against Boogie Down Production MCs, who would win in the battle? Mm. I think we we got numbers. Yeah. They, okay. They got KRS, you know, hands down, but we got we got numbers. Okay. Because I I don't even have to. I can just push Kane and and, and G Rap it to the front forefront. And, and you and you, yeah. And then yeah, you know, I'm in the, I'm waiting in the back. Yeah. Me and Craig and Shan Shantae, we you know we we waiting. For the next one. Okay. He, he played the number round. I got to. It's okay. true, but okay. it, was, it was true. If the numbers were even. You got to give me the names, though. Oh, shit. That's the, that's the problem. He right. Okay. All right. <laughs> go ahead, Mike. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to go there. 
Master Ace, I have a question. It's yes. kind of along the lines of what you were saying, what the caller was saying, what Heather was just saying in terms of the division within hip hop versus the older generation versus the, and the younger generation. Parents today are of the hip hop age who are raising these kids. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the respect level goes both ways? Because I often find parents of the hip hop generation are very dismissive of these young rappers. Right? That's part of the problem. And then the younger rappers are also yeah. dismissive of those who came before, right? And so I feel like we're having this misconnect in the mm -hmm. conversation. No, there, there is. Um, because... A lot of people from my generation, they just put it all into one big basket. Mm -hmm. All that stuff is car garbage. It's all trash. They don't even want to sift through it and find those those gems and those talented dudes. Like, um, this kid, uh, Cy High the Prince. Cy High, mm, yeah, from our Atlanta. Guy, family. Mm. That dude is ridiculous. Yeah, he's incredible. Ridiculous. But if I mention him to somebody my age, they're gonna be like, "Who's that? I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is." They, 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 they all they all rap the same. No, no, mm -hmm. there's dudes that can rhyme. Let's be. Let's let's find those cats that can really spit, and he's one of those dudes. He he got his big exposure on this show first years ago, and see we recognize it. And I think for us, the reason why we're able to find those diamonds in the so-called rough, c couple reasons back when we were coming up, you, it wasn't as saturated because it wasn't as many outlets. Right. So it's not to say that it wasn't a slew of whack ass shit out there. There was, uh, right. but it, pl it was plenty of it. But by the time you went through the record label filter, the A and R guy, and all these, by the time we got the projects. They were kind of more well developed. Right. Um, number one, we we and we went through a lot of whackness, you know, and so you kind of got to do the same thing in these days. What you're saying, we yeah. cipher through all of this stuff. We find the cyber pivots. Yeah. We find the sci high, the princes. We find the Joyner Lucases and all these different people. Right. Uh, and 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 so I think those folks who are saying it aren't doing the deep dive. They're mm -hmm. not. They don't want to. They're yeah. not committed to it like that. Yeah. So it's a good broad stroke that everything's whack. Right. You know, every right. producer sounds the same. And then you listen to this album and you realize that Marco Polo is a scientist mm -hmm. in the lab, ladies and gentlemen. He's a scientist. <sighs> Thank you. Oh no, nah, man, this shit is dope, dog. Um. Hey, Ace, can we do something, man? Like it was on the Wake Up Show with Sway and Tech, man. You know, I used yeah. to come up there and always perform a song or do something for us. We got a we got a beat lined up, a Marco Polo beat okay. off the album. Uh -huh. And I think we should at least let people who don't know about the record give them a little taste of what you know what's on there. Okay, let's do it, man. This is uh, the one and only Master Ace, Marco Polo on the beats. Sway in the Morning, the Brooklyn Story is the name of the album. It's out now. Yo, DJ Wonder, drop a beat on them. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. For the real MC. Sway in the Morning, Master Ace, Marco Polo. Shout Heather B, shout Tracy. You know what it is. Oh, Q, what up? Serious XFM. Let's go. DJ yeah. Wonder, Mike News. Yeah. I be the man in front of the fans gandering Standing in spotlights fam, you panhandling And I'm in most top tens, you been rambling Running off the lips big, Pam Anderson You's a real sad man, play the mandolin You sitting home like should, could with your wood paneling Face it, you stuck in the basement And panicking, stagnant, and can't move A damn mannequin Everything you do in your life is self-damaging Drug scrambling, raw sex and gun brandishing Can't stop, you got shot, the doc bandaging Meanwhile, I'm in Spain up in the Spanish Inn Bad cutie with the tanner skin Then we telling the bartender Give us your best brand of gin Hip hop's what we got a big advantage in Ain't rich, not yet, damn, but your man's managing yeah. Understands we can't be yeah. stopped Get blocked You don't wanna get shot You don't wanna get shot, son My rap sheet, nigga, classics Mr. Kimbe, but some more of this rap Master shit Master Ace Understands uh. we can't be stopped Get blocked you don't want to get shot. I'm going to stand up for this second verse. I'm going to stand up with you, eh? Marco Polo on the beat. Anyways, I spit fierce flow so many ways. I've been nice since piggy bank saving my penny days. Before the Alizé, Alizé and Henny craze. Way before Barry Bonds. Guess I'm calling this Willie Mays. Why you sitting spitting your silly phrase? I've been writing and reciting something that really pays. That long list is what a man wants out of life. The twist is God won't hear him until he prays. I'm from the block where there's many strays Many cats boosting at Jimmy J's Trying to get them something that's hot So when they walk in the spot They be shining like semi-glaze Salt and pepper beard now, plenty grays Give me Primarcos or give me Dre's Give me Pete 
rock a gimme blaze Big up Jazz Jeff, he from Philly with Gilly stage Yes. Yeah. Nah, nah Listen, you don't wanna, wanna get, get shot. shot Read my rap sheet, nigga, don't classic Nah, man Make my tumbo of this rap Sway in the morning Understands we can't be stopped Nah, nah uh, Yo, man, you don't wanna get shot Read my rap sheet yeah, a Brooklyn story. Marco Polo on the beat. Uh. Marco Polo on the beat. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Uh. I was gonna no. say them scratches ain't on the record. Yeah, no, the scratches on the oh. hook are Shiloh and DJ Link. Shout to that. I like what that sounds. That kind of DJ dope Wonder, though. Sway in the Morning, a like Brooklyn it. story. The like album is out now. Ah oh, man. Woo! I'm, I'm, I'm to tell, I be liking they stuff too much, man. I just, yeah. I got you look that. like you was about to yo, spit bars. Oh, okay, yo, <laughs> yo. You put your shades put on like you was about to spit. I put the sunnies on, kid. So much light in this room, so much shine in this room. And you got to appreciate what you're seeing. I, I have to have an affinity towards my brother, Master Ace. We walked in this game at the same time. Yes, and yes. we've been living these parallel lives and being able to make a living off our passion. Yes. So I love you, Ace. Appreciate Master you, Ace, Sway love in the too, Morning, man. Shade 4 5, Marco Polo, everything you stand for, man. I feel like you would have been right there with us when we started the Wake Up Show. You was too young, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But we all cut from the same cloth and keep upholding those traditions that people are trying to tell us aren't important anymore. Absolutely. And pretty soon they'll erase our whole legacy mm. and then they'll redefine what this culture is as a whole to no. something that's that more happen. fitting to them. No. But you need people like Marco Polo. You need people like Master Ace to uphold these traditions naturally. True. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, it, we, we need that to preserve what's ours. So I want to say thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank man. you. You guys want to hear this interview back. This course, it was live. You go to SiriusXM. SiriusXM.com slash on demand. Okay, and then we'll be posted on Sway's Universe, the YouTube channel, and the site, too, in the next day or so. Yep. Um, also, we want to thank our guest, Felly, for coming by. Felly! Young man got his new album out. Surf Trap. Uh, mm-hmm. Check him out. Um, he's on the rise. And more Soup, please, the DJ. My man Soup came by today. Yep. Um, check him out as well. Uh, Mike Muse, how can they reach you real quick? Bong. Yo, at I am Mike Muse, M U S and Sam E on Instagram and Twitter. Woo! Check me out on Instagram, OQ Shoots. Okay. Uh, DJ Wonder. At DJ Wonder everywhere. Booking DJ Wonder at gmail.com. Tracy. Your Instagram at it's Tracy G I T S T R A C Y. I'm at Happy Hour W H B. Happy Holidays. Marco Yay! Polo, how can they reach you on social media? Y'all need beats? Marco Polo Beats Instagram, Marco Polo Beats Twitter, Marco Polo Beats PA on Facebook. All right, Ace, how can they talk to you, man? You a legend. You an icon. We celebrate. The icon I- living. The IG, IG is Master Ace Picks, P-I-C-S. And the Twitter is Master Ace. The Facebook fan page is Master Ace Official. Hey, man, Ace has put together a, 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 a slew of great projects, collaborative albums as well as solo albums. Uh, what I love about your music, man, like I could go back and, and listen to like uh, Disposable Arts or something, Classic. And, you know, and find something in all your albums that feel like it's current, like it's present. Thank you. You that's, know, that's, the, the point is to try to make timeless music. Yeah. Well, you, you've succeeded at that. A Brooklyn Story is out now. Get a Brooklyn Story. Uh, listen to that album and then go get a take, take a look around album too and listen to that as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, hey, thanks for coming through. I'm Thank at Real man. Sway across the board. Um, um, and until Monday, happy holidays happy to you guys. Happy holidays. Season's greetings. We were saying we don't celebrate necessarily the reasons why people celebrate exactly. Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. That's pretty tragic if you ask me. Um, but we do celebrate the opportunity to come together with loved ones and, and friends and unify as a community. Exactly. That sounds good. All right, cool. Man, on that yeah. note, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have absolutely. He's at Real Sway. I'm at Real Sway, and we have nothing left to say. One day. One day.